Today is the 30th Sunday in Ordinary Time, and we have titled our reflection, The Joy of Divine Restoration. Chapter 31 of the prophet Jeremiah continues the theme of the restoration of Israel and Judah we find in chapter 30. Israel, Ephraim, and Samaria, names typical of the northern kingdom of Israel, are used in an inclusive way for both kingdoms of Israel and Judah. To understand our first reading today, we need to remind ourselves of the Assyrian exile. The Assyrians were brutal and took the Israelites in the northern kingdom into exile and settled a new people in the kingdom of Israel. The prophet predicts a happy return of the exiles. If you read verses 2-3 to three of this chapter and the restoration of Israel and the holy city of Jerusalem, also called Zion, in verses 4-6. to six. Our reading today assures a total restoration. Shout with joy for Jacob references the 12 sons who formed the 12 tribes of Israel. God will save the entire Israelite nation and also the remnants of Israel, those who the Assyrians have scattered to different places. God will bring them back to their land. There is a specific mention of the blind and the lame, nursing mothers and pregnant women. God is often concerned about the most vulnerable among his people. The physical infirmities of the blind and the lame or the challenges of the pregnant women or the nursing mothers will not be an obstacle to their return. God will bring them back to their homeland and guide them to streams of water. Read Psalm 23. With weeping they shall come. Speaks about their repentance as they offer pleas of mercy which God will not ignore. God is a father to Israel and Ephraim is his firstborn son and so God will never forget his people. Ephraim was the favored son of Joseph but in this context it refers to the entire people of Israel as the chosen people of God among the other nations. The firstborn son has responsibilities within the family. He was the one who succeeded his father as head of the family. Israel, being firstborn, was chosen by God to bring salvation to the whole world. God wants to restore the joy of his people, and he does that even today. The psalmist echoes the song of the returned exiles. When God delivered them from their bondage, it was like a dream. Their mouths were filled with laughter, and on their leaves there were songs. Looking at the world or our immediate environment, we may think that all hope is lost. Not at all. God is still there and he will restore our joy as individuals, as a people and as a world. The second reading presents Jesus as the high priest and describes the call and the function of the priests. The author says, Pas gar akireos ex anthropon. For every high priest, akireos, is chosen from among men, anthropos. The Greek Achereos, that is, high priest, is the head and leader of the Jewish religion and the Sanhedrin, whose members are from the priestly families. The priests are from the tribe of Levi, and the high priest is a descendant of Aaron, the first high priest from the tribe of Levi. The high priest is chosen from among men, Anthropos. Anthropos means a man or a person, and in the plural it generically means human beings or people. God therefore chooses the high priest from among the people for specific duties. According to Hebrews, the high priest is appointed to act on behalf of the people in relation to God, to offer gifts and sacrifices for sins. Since the high priest is from and like the people in all things, including sinfulness, he can sympathize with them and so offer sacrifices for his and their sins. Thus, in Leviticus chapter 16, the high priest alone 
on the annual day of atonement enters the Holy of Holies to atone for the people's sins and with the sacrificed blood of animals. So like Aaron, it is God who calls to the priestly vocation for no one takes the honor upon himself. In the New Testament, Jesus is the high priest chosen by God, although he is not a descendant of Aaron or from the tribe of Levi. He is from the tribe of Judah. However, the letter to the Hebrews presents Jesus' priesthood as greater than the Levitical priesthood, quoting Psalm 110 verse 4, You are a priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. Melchizedek, meaning the king of righteousness, described as the king of Salem, that is the king of peace, was called the priest of God Most High in Genesis chapter 14 verse 18. He offered bread and wine to bless Abraham at his return um, from the battle for Lot, his nephew, and typologically represents Jesus, the high priest who offers himself in the form of bread and wine. Jesus is therefore the faithful high priest whose priesthood according to the order of Melchizedek is forever. So while the Levitical priest offered animal blood for the people's sins, Jesus offered his body and blood in the Eucharist for the sin of the world and the redemption of humanity under the appearance of bread and wine. And as the Levitical priests are able to sympathize with the people because they are like them, Jesus sympathizes with us because he is like us in all things except sin. See Hebrews chapter 4 verse 15. He gives us joy through his divine restoration and he calls and walks through the priest, the altar Christus, that is the other Christ, through the celebration of the sacraments and through the service of life, ready to lay down his life for his flock. The Gospel reading from Mark chapter 10 verses 46 to 52 recounts the healing of the blind man at Jericho. In Mark's Gospel, it is the last miracle of Jesus before he entered Jerusalem, where he would be persecuted and executed. This miracle is told in all the Synoptic Gospels with minor differences, which show the adaptation of a main storyline for different purposes and circumstances of the different evangelists. While both Mark and Luke speak of a blind man, see Mark 10, 46-52, Luke 18, 35-43, Matthew speaks of two blind men, see Matthew 20, 29-34. In all the accounts, however, Jericho remains the place of the miracle and seems to be of major interest. So, what about Jericho? The story begins with the following phrase, Kai erhontai es Jericho, that is, and they were arriving Jericho. Without anything in between, the second phrase follows, Kai ekpore womenu autu apo Jericho, that is, and as he was going out of Jericho. Thus, we see Jericho at once as a place of arrival and of departure. Now Jericho was the last station of pilgrims who went to Jerusalem from Galilee, avoiding Samaria because of the difficult relationship between the Samaritans and the Jews. In the New Testament, Jericho is mentioned seven times in four different contexts, four times in the parallel synoptic stories of the healing of the blind man or men, see Matthew 20, 19, Mark 10, 46, Luke 18, 35, once in Jesus' parable of the Good Samaritan, Luke 10, 30, once as the place of the encounter between Jesus and Zacchaeus, a chief tax collector, Luke 19.1, and once outside the Synoptic Gospels in Hebrews 11.30. The latter refers to the Old Testament story of the fall of the walls of Jericho when the Israelites marched round them seven times in obedience to the commands of the Lord. The letter to the Hebrews commemorates Jericho as a great accomplishment of faith. As we read in Hebrews 11.30, By faith, the walls of Jericho fell after they had been encircled for seven days. Among the four different contexts in which Jericho is evoked in the New Testament, Jericho appears three times in Luke as a place where Jesus is passing and encounters the great faith of individuals who earnestly sought to see or meet him. In the parable of the Good Samaritan, Jericho is evoked and associated with the greatest manifestation of faith, which is love of God in the love of a stranger neighbor 
which the good Samaritan showed. At Jericho, both the shot Zacchaeus and the blind Bartimaeus display uncommon faith by making their way to Jesus against all the odds of both the crowd around Jesus and their physical challenges. Zacchaeus for his lack of height and Bartimaeus for his lack of sight. Zacchaeus climbs on top of the tree, Bartimaeus on top of his voice. Son of David, have mercy on me, he kept on shouting. In the case of Bartimaeus, Jesus declares, Go, your faith has made you well. Mark 10, 52 A declaration which restores the sight of the blind man and sets him on the way to follow Jesus. Similarly, Jesus concludes the discussion with Zacchaeus declaring, Today salvation has come to this house because he too is a son of Abraham. Luke 19, 9 in the story set at Jericho, we learn to not allow anything scare us away from Jesus because he carries with him our deliverance and restoration. We learn that with faith, what the world considers our disadvantage can be our point of encounter with God's abundant grace, which restores our losses and supplements our lacks. May our families our communities like Jericho, the settings where Jesus can be welcomed against all odds, even as he brings to us the joy of divine restoration. The Devar Adonai team thanks you for listening and may Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. To follow our reflections for Sundays and solemnities, please subscribe to our YouTube channel or follow our Facebook page Devar Adonai or visit our website devaradonai.org